right, welcome to the first half. Uh, Chris, we are delighted to have you here. Not only are you a sponsor in this uh, mental health, health sort of capsule project over these next several months, but you are somebody I've gotten known a long time uh, in Montreal, you're an entrepreneur, um, but there's no better way to introduce what you do and who you are than yourself. So again, welcome to the first half and let everybody know um, that's not from Montreal, uh, what you guys are up to here at uh, the gym, which is the solution and was born from being a solution to what other gyms were all about. Right. Uh, so my name is Chris Ince, uh, born and raised in Montreal. And uh, yeah, you and I training. Uh, we're actually celebrating our 25th anniversary this year. Uh, starting in 1999, we actually didn't have a gym at all. Um, we were a team of trainers nutritionist, yoga instructor, Pilates instructor, massage therapist, and we went to people's homes and offices. Um, we liked to think of ourselves as the solution to the gym issue because at that time in the 90s, the gyms were a bit more um, very commercial, very bodybuilder oriented, uh, very intimidating, and people were having a hard time getting into it. So we said, let's bring it with another another focus in mind and another angle. So we went straight to the person. Take and, away the barrier to entry. And, and going, and, and that straight to the person angle, and again, we, I still want a little bit more of your background, but that going to th that tailor-made, that custom, almost concierge-style service uh, must have been a game changer. It was a game changer. Uh, at the time, we were definitely the only ones doing it. Uh, I think even right now, I don't know of many businesses that are um, offering a team of people that will go to your home and office, which we still do. So in, in conjunction with having these actual physical yeah. brick and mortar kind of locations. Yeah, 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 definitely. Which is amazing. And I, and again, that, the, that personal aspect is, well, it's been going on for a long time for all over the world, but it's a, it does give people that sense of, of calm. Sometimes they're in, you know, a little nervous about, right. you know, Exactly. Getting in those tight, tight shorts in Definitely. front of uh, in front of uh, you know twenty, thirty other people. So, um, sorry, just just to back it up just a little bit. So, your background. Mm -hmm. How did you get into the uh, the health? I, I don't want to be ridiculous, but it is the health sector, right? So Definitely. Uh, nutrition and and you know the, the psychology, the physiology, the physiology, the whole the thing. Where did that come from? Like, how did, where does where does that origin story look like? I mean, it looked like uh, a typical child who grew up with active parents. My parents were both into sports and exercise, and so they implanted that on me very early. Um, so I was in sports, hockey, soccer, all my life. And um, as I got older, I was a typical kind of smaller child who was playing these sports and I needed to get a bit more size on myself to start competing and to continue competing. And so uh, they put me in the gym pretty early. And Your parents? Yep. They were like, hey, yo, Chrissy, let's, let's, let's do this. This is going to yeah. give you a little bit of an off advantage. Season. Yeah, really? off season. That's get, amazing. Get think, well, think about that. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was very cool. Um, and it was also very cool that the gym <clears throat> down the street had a program for people who were 13, kids who were 13, that could come in and there was a trainer that would show them around and show them the exercises and kind of supervise. At 13, you don't see that very often. No, and that's actually, that's actually a very good point. Yeah. It's that's not normally done unless you're, you know, in the, let's be honest, you're in some sort of academy in the U.S. where, yeah. you know, the sports is, is being laid down since eight, nine, right. ten exactly. sort of thing. Exactly. Right? And this wasn't specific to any sport. It was really just about introducing kids to health and wellness, fitness and wellness, whatever you want to call it. So, yeah, so yeah that was pretty unique. And uh, I just took it from there uh, because I was one of the first um, – people my age in my school, let's say uh, first one of my peers doing the gym, when it came to 16, 17, and my friends started getting into it, they would ask me questions. And they would yeah, because that would be more the typical age, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. So 16, 17, my friends started to ask me questions, and that led to one of them suggesting I go work at a gym, and I was like, oh, yeah, maybe I should go work at a gym. Got into Energy Calzio started being a personal trainer. And that's and a, and that again, for anybody who's not in, in Montreal, that's a, that's sort of a gym chain. Yes, it's, a big, it's one of the biggest in 
Montreal and Quebec for sure. Um, turned into Econo Fitness. Uh, yeah, massive, massive Again, business massive story. gym chain, yeah. very unpersonalized. Yeah, yeah, unpersonalized. But also, I mean, you know, without those types of gyms, we don't exist either. So it's important to have all those things because without it, the fitness industry, the health industry doesn't exist where it is today. Right. Um, so that's how I got my start. So I would never like say. Oh, yeah, no, I didn't mean it like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but Pardon definitely, me. definitely different than what we do. Um, that wasn't the angle we wanted to take. We wanted to do something different, carve our own path. And so, yeah, that's how we started. The, uh, and I'm just going to quickly pick on this is because I have to, the football, the soccer aspect mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. growing up, you knew mm -hmm. this was coming. You yeah. knew this was yeah, coming. Yeah. Then we yeah. can move on. <laughs> um, when you, especially being here in, in Canada and growing up, and again, you dropped it yourself, hockey, soccer, you know, the mm -hmm. different sports, this kind of stuff. Did you, was there any inclination to go further within the football sphere? Uh, did you play for a long time? Did you play at a level that you, you know, there's kickabout, there's the weekends, mm -hmm. and then there's, you know, there's there's leagues, there's, yep. and, and then there's levels. So. Yep. Um, just whatever, what was the, um, what was your trajectory within uh, soccer? And then we'll let it be, Yeah. but yeah. Uh, it's just important, be, especially because, you know, the ethos here for the right. first half does right. run through, uh, right. through soccer. Uh, yeah, it was important to me too. It was important in my development. Um, I started like a normal four-year-old in house leagues, cool. you know, where kids would be walking off in the middle of the game <laughs> to go see their for parents. Game. Yeah. Or to go chase a butterfly. Yeah, exactly. No, no, uh, and uh, then, you know, as I got older, I was on intercity teams and midget AAA, and I played one year for Champlain, St. Lambert, where I went to see Jep. Okay. Um, and that's where I kind of realized that my, my ambitions weren't pro soccer. So I almost felt like I was taking a spot from somebody who might be more yeah, But that's still pretty high level. That. Yeah, yeah. No, but uh, right, like not. Uh, don't, yeah, no, I wouldn't disrespect uh, that. I mean, there's, no, 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 you know, no. Yeah, I never works. got off the bench, <laughs> right, so okay. let's be clear here. <laughs> so no, but this is important. That's yeah. a, that's pretty high level. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, Sejep. I was talking to somebody at one point recently about how uh, it was me and another friend when we were in high school. We were the only ones interested in Premier League, wow. and part of it was the fact that my name is Ince. And Paul Ince was on yeah, Man United. Right. And uh, there was always, you know, some aunts and uncles saying that we were related somehow. <laughs> That's amazing. Imagine. Like, well, probably not. But, you know, uh, you got to do one of those tests. A, as a kid, it was like, maybe I am. So it was one of those things that, uh, That's that good. always stuck with That's me. That's a great story, yeah, the yeah, Paul yeah. Ince story. Yeah, you yeah. know, that's a clip. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Okay, so so that's the soccer story. You decided to you know sort of pull out at, at that level in college and say Jeb just so that you can sort of take a different uh, direction because you felt based yeah. on what the coaches were saying in your own physicality that you weren't going to go any further. Yeah, exactly. Right. So then that leads you now into different sort of health space sector, and then here we are yeah. today. Yeah. So one of the questions that, that I had was, um, I do want to get into diet and sort of the importance of, of, of diet within uh, this sphere and how that really does play a huge factor in, in how you perform. But modern science today, how has that changed the way you're working with your clients? Mm. Um, utilizing a lot of stuff that's in a gym normally hasn't changed dramatically mm -hmm. in the last 10 I mean there's there's lots of little pieces and, and smaller equipment elements that have changed right but there's still a lot of major pieces that have remained the same yeah so how have you guys here and what you do uh, with with your one-on-ones and stuff use science to sort of advance your training um, programs and you know it, enlighten us a little bit how you've used uh, you know the new modern uh, technologies? I think one of the biggest changes has been the specificity of individuals. Um, individuals on our team, we like to think that one of our advantages is that we work as a team, all of us together. And so everybody on the team has their own specific background and we'll use that to our advantage to you know, assess uh, an individual's needs before we prescribe certain exercises. Um, okay. So for example, we have Farrell, who's a um, 
barefoot training specialist. This is something you would never heard of in the 90s, right? Never. But he will look at your feet and analyze them and find the issues and then can tell you specific things that you can do to help your feet. And when you think about it, your foot takes the brunt of basically everything, everything. you do. Um, and so if it has a problem, then your knee has a problem, and then your hip has a problem, and your back has a problem. And you never think of looking at your foot when your back's hurting, but it might very well be your feet. So yeah. um, I think what modern science has done is we've been able to specialize in certain areas and then use those things with... Like utilizing those tools and, and sort of what the teachings are teaching. Are yeah. you guys... Um up to date with that kind of stuff? Are you constantly training and continuing retraining education, and continuing yes. education? Yes, yes, we're big on that. We're big on continuing education every year. We like to bring in uh, different different seminars if we can. Uh, if not, we encourage our team to go out and seek them out and we'll you know, compensate part of the costs and stuff like that so that they can they can continually educate yourselves. It's, uh, it's one of the biggest difference makers in our industry. If you're going to be successful, you need to be on top of things at all times. So um, we definitely encourage that as much as yeah, possible. Yeah, it, it, it must be the only way, right? Like, yeah. it, it must be the only way. Um, yeah. I say that as in always advancing. You, The second you're stagnant, you're, you're done. Yeah. You're done in anything anyways, but yeah. in your bu your business specific. Yeah, for sure. Because every, every week there's something you come coming yeah. up, which now leads me to diet. Okay. I'm asking, or I'm bringing that up is because that is, again... Um, the 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 new part of a year in 2024, you know, people sort of really go, they start to try and analyze their food, their alcohol, uh, you know, their sleep, all, all the different elements that could be affecting their overall, their general health. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that's important for me, at least on my side, is I've definitely delved sort of deeper into the importance of food. Okay. Um, and you know, recently there's been a lot of documentaries and, and that sort of thing. So how does food play into your overall sort of training with your individual clients mm -hmm. and or your smirking? So this is gonna be amazing. Either you're like, <laughs> you're right, you're like, you're like yeah, no, yeah, get yeah, the yeah. cupcakes out of the cupboard, <laughs> man. Get the cupcakes out of the cupboard. No, but right, so yeah. um, that has to be a factor because if you and I train for an hour and then you go away and I eat a tray of brownies, it's over. Yeah. Like, the game, right? right? It's done. Yeah. Like, there's muscle building, but then the rest of the thing is just falling apart. Right. So thoughts on that, on, on diet and, and sort of health and the importance? Yeah. So as much as things change, the more they stay the same. And uh, again, I think I would say the specificity is really where everything is changing. Um, whole foods remains the standard. You, you know, eat your vegetables, you know, get your vitamins, all those things. Healthy, healthy foods is the fundamental to all and processed foods you should try and stay away from. But now more and more what we see with science is very, very minute differences like omega-3s and people talking about how much omega-3 they need to get. Um, vitamin D and people talking about that little micronutrient. These are very, very tiny elements, but they're now being analyzed and specified for people. And I think that's one of the things we're trying to key in on is what type of workout are you doing? What type of lifestyle are you leading? And that will dictate what type of nutrition you're supposed to be getting. And when you mean and when you mean lifestyle, is that something that during your process uh, is super key to the the thread with what you guys are up to? Like, is that something that when you're speaking with, hey, I want to get in good shape? Yeah. I think. I mean, your first question is lifestyle. Hundred percent. Right. It's part of our evaluation process, and it's uh, it's a big deciding factor in how you're going to succeed. If you're a super type A personality who's highly stressed, um, you might tend to want to gravitate towards like a HIIT workout, which is super high intensity, because that's what you're used to doing. But that might not actually be what you need, because you're already too stressed. You might actually want to gear towards some yoga or some Pilates or something that's more mindful to bring you down. Because and you that's something that you can, you can tell that when you have this uh, this initial conversation right. with with the human on the other side, exactly, because that makes that much of a difference, right? So it, huge, it's huge, huge difference for sure. Uh, sleep is huge. So if you're somebody who's not getting any sleep, then the benefits of any workout that you're trying to do are going to be super limited. So we need to fix the sleep sleep issue before 
we fix anything it's else. that important right it's very important. so if somebody yeah. if somebody's having that kind of an issue it can derail everything that you guys are putting in place is it is it to that level or is it just I don't want to say mitigate, but it, it slows down, you yeah. know, where you're trying to get. Yeah, I mean, if it's a severe, severe sleep issue, then yeah, I can derail everything. But if it's, even if it's just mildly not great, then it's going to affect recovery. It's going to affect, you know, the regeneration of your muscle tissues and all those things. So it's going to affect uh, the results. There's one question that I wanted to ask, and then um, I wanted to see if there was something that you wanted to say, you know, uh, concerning sort of the history here at the gym and, and, and your, your building into the community and some of the things that you've done there. But do you, is there one or two myths in the gym space that sort of everybody always thinks about and you want to debunk off the, off the top? Oh, man. You're laughing, why? Because it must podcast. be, it must be, that's a whole other show, <laughs> yeah, right? It's, it, it's show. funny, but it's, it's one of those ones where I, it's, you know it. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like, yeah, yeah, if I yeah. do it this way, this will happen. It's just like, man, yeah. you're, nobody knows. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. is there even one or two, you do, we don't need a whole show on that, but like just sure. one or two where you're just laughing that it literally is the same question every time and you're just like, listen, you yeah. know, like you, at this point you need a big wall billboard to like question yeah. answer. Yeah, I mean, uh, so one that came up just yesterday that carbs are bad, carbs are not bad. <laughs> They're so not bad. It's, I mean, like it's such a broad term, carbs, so... Uh, to just generally blanket statements, say carbs are bad, carbs are not bad. No. Um, so mm -hmm. that's one that's <laughs> definitely, you know, up there. And then the other one that would be pretty uh, relevant in these days is that lifting weights will make you big and huge. Right. It's, n it's not that easy. You no. don't just lift a couple weights and become big and huge. And have a protein shake and you're yeah, good to go. Yeah, that's not how it works. No. Uh, you know, there's genetics that come into play. There's the type of workout, uh, so on and so forth. Everybody needs muscle. If you don't maintain your muscle mass as you get older, you're going to have trouble getting out of this chair. Yeah. And that's not the quality of life you want no. as you get older. So you need to maintain muscle. You need to lift weights, everybody. So um, that's another one that, you know, comes up a lot that we need to get rid of. That's amazing. And again, like I said, that, that I know there's a whole show yeah, based yeah. just <laughs> just around that. We should remember that actually for the next time. Yeah. Um, have you seen an uptake and an uptick in people of all age ranges coming to you guys f for help and taking health more seriously? And I'm not talking at a start of 20 of a new year, you know, over the last year or two. Have you seen a bigger push, you know, post pandemic and all these things? Is, is health much more at the top of the list of importance for a wide range of you know men and women coming in to see you definitely that like that wouldn't normally be here right like that aren't right uh, i see i see maybe normally sporty it's now it's somebody that's saying you know what today is the day i'm taking this seriously because of what's going around me and what i see happening in the world and it's now time to take this serious so we've always been pretty wide variety when it comes to who's in here, uh, all ages, all ranges of, uh, of person. But we definitely see a difference when tragedy strikes that people start thinking about their health a lot more. So I think the two that I you know, remember off the top of my head are 2008, the financial crisis, that was a big one. The year after, big push, big push. There was a lot of people getting into health. Just because when I think, everything else is going going down a lot of people think at least i have my health or i'm lucky to have my health so then this past situation with an actual health crisis uh a lot of people skyrocketed saw that. yeah a lot of people saw that oh okay this is something i need to key in on because this is how i'm gonna sure. survive going forward right so um so yeah there's definitely been an increase in people coming in to say i want to take care of my health not just I want to look good in a bikini, yeah. but I want to take care Overall. of my health. I don't just want to have a six pack and big arms. Yeah. I want to take care of my huge health. Huge difference. Yeah. Huge difference. Yeah, yeah. Huge difference. Um, and then the last question, and then, uh, you know, again, these are short and sweet, but um, one another important one is community. And, and this is mm -hmm. sort of our baseline, too, with the first half and, and other community-related projects that we do. Um, and that's something you're very big into, and I mean supporting yeah. the community, the local community, a wider range of community, people that can or can't afford things, right. um, depending on sort of what the cause is. How important is it for you to be really entrenched in community, not just be a business, like, hey, come check us out, here's a discount. Yeah. You know, what, what does, what is, 
thought this sounded ridiculous, but what does community mean for you and, and, and to the big picture? Yeah. I mean, it means everything to me, um, especially as a small business owner. If we are not taking care of our community, our community doesn't take care of us. Um, coming from you know my upbringing, my family, uh, this building uh, is super important uh, in our community. In this area of Point St. Charles, where a lot of Irish immigrants came in, um, my grandparents on my mom's side lived on this street. They worked in this building. My parents worked in this building. Now I'm working in this building, so this building still exists. This community still exists. I need to take care of the community so that the community, you know, we ha we Embraces we live together. Yeah. We we are you know intertwined. So I want to always make sure that I give back. Um, yeah, just as much as they gave to me. So yeah, it's an easy. Yeah, that's a beautiful. That's a perfect answer, and yeah. that's a really good story too yeah. with the building. Holy moly! Yeah. All right. So listen, Chris. Thank you so so much for joining us in the first half, at the first half podcast, and being one of the supporters on this sort of long-term um, sort of health initiative, because again, we're not all about health. We're not talking about health all the time, no. I, but it is something that, that's important. It's gonna be important for everybody moving forward. Mm -hmm. I definitely recognize it. Mm -hmm. And again, we're honored to have you as you know, one, of, one of the sponsors to help get these messages out. And what we're really excited about is that within this uh, relationship and this project, you guys are providing our listeners with actual exercises for the next few episodes yeah. um, by some of your, your health experts, which is awesome, yeah. right? So anybody who's going to be listening to this can check it out, the video version. They're going to be able to f see these clips uh, and utilize them at home. So you're getting your own little private gym session. Mm -hmm. That's right. And that's, right. Uh, that's all brought to you uh, by you and, 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 and your crew. So, Chris, thank you very much. No problem. Cheers. Thank you. Hey guys, I'm Chris and today we're going to be doing a glider lunge. So just like uh, your normal forward backward lunge, it's going to target the glutes and the hamstrings and the quads. Uh, but with the glider, gliding forward, coming back, you're going to target your hamstring even more as you pull that against the friction. And then when you go backwards on your way forward, you're going to target your hip flexor in the forward motion. Uh, these things are going to be super important when you're playing soccer to provide power into the ball on your kicks and also power for your sprints. Do three sets of 20 per leg and enjoy.